Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. A secret chamber was recently discovered in Egypt's Great Pyramid of Giza. It's a hundred... Scientists say that they have found a mysterious chamber hidden deep inside Egypt's Great Pyramid of Giza. The journal Nature reports the 30-meter void deep within the pyramid is situated above its grand gallery and has a similar cross-section. Announced to the world in 2017, the Great Pyramid Big Void is one of the most fascinating archaeological discoveries of the modern era. And this week I found out some new information, details I'd never heard before, and so it's time to revisit the subject once again. For decades, many of us have wanted to know if there are hidden chambers or passageways in the Great Pyramid. And although there are some clues in stonework that still need investigating, as well as some anomalies recorded in geophysical surveys, a new major inner structure has not been found inside the Great Pyramid since the 19th century. But that was before the year 2016. Because now, thanks to a state-of-the-art technique that's called muography, we're finally close to seeing the complete internal structure of the last remaining wonder of the ancient world. So, what is muography? Well, the Earth is constantly pummeled by cosmic rays that originate from outer space. As they reach the Earth's atmosphere, some of the subatomic particles can be deflected by the planet's magnetic field, but others pass through and continue their descent to the Earth's surface. As they pass through the atmosphere, they undergo a series of reactions, creating a shower of new subatomic particles, and amongst these are what are known as muons. Muons are everywhere on Earth, continually passing through us and everything on the planet at almost the speed of light, and from all angles. They can penetrate hundreds of metres of rock. Muon imaging works a bit like an X-ray. Muon detectors, known as nuclear emulsion films, are placed underneath or inside structures to capture the muons that pass through it. In the resulting image, high-density areas such as the core masonry of the Great Pyramid will show up as dark patches, and that's because a lot of muons get absorbed by the masonry, whilst others are deflected away. Basically, less muons will reach the detectors. But empty spaces like corridors and chambers will show up as bright patches, as muons can pass through easily, and so more of them can reach the detectors. The technology isn't perfect, but the contrast is easy to see, and placing emulsion films in various positions inside the Great Pyramid and using instruments called scintillator hodoscopes mean scientists are able to identify voids, corridors and chambers. The technology is also used in the study of volcanoes. So, at the beginning of the Scan Pyramids mission, around 80 emulsion films were placed inside the pyramid, in places that were off-limits to tourists, such as the Queen's Chamber and also the early part of the descending passageway. Once set up, they were left exposed to the cosmic muons as these tiny particles moved through the pyramid. The resulting radiography allowed scientists to visualise the known and also any unknown voids in a non-invasive way. It is hard to explain this technology in a nutshell. It's complicated and way over my head, but hopefully this has helped. Anyway, not long after the new mission was announced, the first discovery was made. In 2016, Scan Pyramids announced a small void had been detected on the north face of the pyramid, like a small corridor just behind the chevrons. The existence of such a void had been speculated for some time, but now we had some hard scientific evidence that a corridor existed. It was an incredible find, and a full paper on this discovery can be downloaded from the Scan Pyramids website. I've left a link in the description below. Of course, we now know that this discovery has progressed a great deal, and earlier this year, an endoscopic camera entered the small void, allowing us to see inside a chamber or corridor that has been closed for four and a half thousand years. 
I'm sure there'll be a lot more to come from this in the future. But if the discovery of a small void was not exciting enough, a year later and an even more incredible discovery was announced. On November 2nd, 2017, Nature published the latest findings from the Scan Pyramids project in an article titled Discovery of a Big Void in Khufu's Pyramid by Observation of Cosmic Ray Muons. It of course took the world by storm as every major media outlet in the world jumped on the story. This wasn't a small room or 9 metre corridor, this void was 30 metres long. It's huge and it's high up inside the world's most famous and most studied ancient structure. As the Nature article says, it's the first major inner structure found in the Great Pyramid since the 19th century. It was first observed with the nuclear emulsion films installed in the Queen's Chamber and then confirmed with the scintillator holoscope instruments and these were set up in the same chamber. It was then finally reconfirmed with gas detectors outside the pyramid. A large void had therefore been found with high confidence by three different muon detection technologies and three independent analyses. So, we knew a void was there, an enormous void, 30 metres long and positioned above the Grand Gallery. But we didn't know the specific shape, whether it was sloping like the Grand Gallery, whether it sloped the opposite way, or whether it was horizontal. We didn't know the exact dimensions, but there was a lot of speculation on the internet that what we're looking at is a possible second Grand Gallery. One that may link up with the small void, aka the North Face Corridor. Since the discovery of the big void, we really haven't heard a great deal more. And there was even some doubt by Egyptologists as to whether or not a big void even existed. David Ian Lightbody wrote a study that questioned the results arguing the big void was in fact caused by two construction space zones flanking the Grand Gallery. Other Egyptologists also threw shade on the usefulness of muography with regards to pyramid exploration, which I really do find to be quite bizarre. Anyway, as we know, the Scan Pyramids team did successfully find the small void using this technique, proving that muography does work in the Great Pyramid. And although yes, the technology does need refining and improving to increase the accuracy of the resulting image, for now, we know it does do what it's meant to do. It can find hidden voids in pyramids. And furthermore, scientists are now certain of the big void's existence. And that's because more work has been done since 2017. After the big void discovery was made public, wooden boxes containing several emulsion plates, as well as two scopes were installed in the Grand Gallery. By 2019, new data acquired from the Grand Gallery confirmed the presence of the big void. It was not caused by two construction space zones flanking the Grand Gallery, as Lightbody had previously suggested, there was a clear and obvious enormous void above it. It's now unquestionable, and experts are 99.999% sure it's there. But interestingly, the new study showed it was actually 40 metres long at a minimum, not 30. So the big void became even bigger. And there's more, and I'll come to that shortly. What the big void is, is of course open to debate, and I'll tackle the options in more detail in a future video. But, to be brief, one option has been put forward by the brilliant French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin, a man who knows the details of the Great Pyramid like no other, and he's of the opinion the Big Void is like another Grand Gallery, meaning we have one on top of the other. As we know, the Grand Gallery is 46 metres long, and the Big Void is 40 metres long at a minimum. Houdin interprets the function of the Grand Gallery as a counterweight system, used during the pyramid's construction to haul the large blocks of granite up into the pyramid. In his detailed pyramid construction model, he predicts there should be a second Grand Gallery above it, precisely where the big void is located. 
The actual mechanics of his hypothesis are more complex and they're not for this video. But if you want to learn more, I've left a link to Houdin's latest paper in the description below. Other researchers have suggested the big void is merely a weight relieving chamber, built above the Grand Gallery solely to protect it from the weight of the stone above. Some believe the big void is one or more antechamber, a place where Khufu stored his precious royal and religious objects for use in the afterlife. We could even be looking at three separate chambers side by side by side, and one of which could even be the final resting place of Khufu. I've also heard another researcher hypothesize that it could actually be a place where Khufu reinterred the royal mummies of his ancestors, people like Snefru, Heta Perez, Huni, and maybe even Josa. In truth, we of course don't know the function of the big void. Nobody does. But as long as we're armed with the facts, however limited, well, anyone can hypothesize. But in a recent interview with Egyptologist Yuki Kawai, published on his fantastic YouTube channel that I've linked below, murography expert Kunihiro Morishima from Nagoya University, the lead author of the 2017 paper that was published in Nature, has revealed some interesting new details regarding its shape and size. What many were expecting to be a second grand gallery is actually looking to be somewhat different. Using the most recent data, the void is at least 40 meters long, but apparently the data shows the void has a somewhat square cross section, being approximately 4 meters wide and 4 meters tall. For reference, the Grand Gallery is 8.6 meters tall and 2.06 meters in width. These new measurements are not published in any paper and it is still a work in progress, but talking to Yuki Kawai, Morishima said, quote, I think it's more of a square shape. The cross section is an image of about 4 meters by 4 meters. End quote. Therefore, if these new measurements are indeed correct, the big void is a completely different shape to the Grand Gallery, implying it may have had a completely different function. Its northern and southern edges, the limits of the void are clear to see on the latest round of scans, but we still don't know if we're looking at one, two or three voids, each position side by side, and we still don't know if it's inclined or straight. Morishima finds it hard to imagine one single room measuring 4 meters by 4 meters by 40 meters. It would be an enormous space. And so he's in the mindset it's more likely to be two chambers side by side. I personally think it's probably three, maybe like the internal layout of the Red Pyramid. But the problem with any hypothesis is access. If it had an important use, whether a burial chamber or royal storeroom, how do you get inside? Well, it could be linked to the new North Face Corridor, which would mean we're looking at a separate set of passages and chambers in the pyramid, ones that may not even connect with the layout we know so well. And this could be possible, because if there is a sloping corridor connecting the big and small voids, according to Morishima, this would be hard to pick up with Muon technology, and that's because of the current placement of the detectors. The only way to find out more is for more Muon detectors to be placed in more public areas of the pyramid, such as the ascending passageway. This would tell us a lot more about if and how the big and small voids are connected, but this could only happen if the pyramid was closed to the public for around three months and of course we could find nothing. Another way we could learn more is to lay muon detectors inside the four air shafts of the Great Pyramid. There they could be undisturbed and could sit in place for a long time and gather more important information to add to the dataset. The big void is a mystery, but it's there, 40 meters long, and according to Morishima, it looks to have a roughly 4 meter square profile. This means it doesn't have the tall corbelled ceiling like the Grand Gallery, 
but it's more likely to have a gabled saddle vault design like the Queen's Chamber, which is also a similar height, being just taller than 4 metres. So Houdan could be correct, it could be another counterweight system that was used in the pyramid's construction, because it doesn't need to be 8 metres high like the Grand Gallery to function as such. And yes, it could just be a weight relieving chamber to protect the Grand Gallery below. It could also be two or three chambers side by side, maybe a burial chamber and antechambers, and until we see inside, all we can do is speculate with the data available. As an independent researcher, I'm allowed to speculate, hypothesize, and wonder. It's why I started a YouTube channel in the first place. The Great Pyramid Mysteries are captivating, and none more so than the possible function of the Big Void. All we know for sure is the Void is there, waiting to be open for the first time in 4,500 years, and who knows what we'll find. In time and with more data we will learn a lot more, and I just hope that one day soon we'll get to see inside. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.